Hi, I'm Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Katina Sawyer, and welcome to the Worker Being Podcast. Today is a Katina article. Do you want to give us a little snippet as to what we have yes, coming? Yes, I will. Um, so what we are going to talk about today is a topic that we've talked about before, but not in this way. Uh, we're going to talk about meaningfulness at work, but some recent research suggests you can actually have too much meaningfulness Oh, interesting. in your job. So um, we're going to talk about what happens when that occurs? I'm going to guess you work a lot. <laughs> you work <Yeah>. too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's Just actually, that, that is a uh, sort of, yes, that's sort of. Sort of. Yes. Okay. Well, the mystery continues. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. But how are you doing today before we kick things off? What's going on in life with you? I'm good. Things are good. Um, you had your birthday yeah. yesterday. I had my birthday, which was fun. Um, I always want to eat sushi on my birthday. Yes. Which I think you can relate to that since you yes, also are a big I sushi can. lover. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And my one of my favorite places, Sugarfish, does this like birthday loyalty club. It's really awesome. So if you go to eat at Sugarfish twice within the year before your birthday, so like meaning like February 24th through 2019 until my birthday, if I go twice then I get to get a free meal on your actual birthday, which is crazy. It is awesome. Right? I feel like that's a crazy good deal. Like, I'm going to definitely go there more than twice a year anyways. Like, I love that place. Totally. And then, so I always make sure we go on my birthday because I'm like, I love this place. I go here all the time. I might as well take advantage of my free birthday meal. Totally. It's so fun. So fun. Yeah. So that's exciting. Um. Yeah, but then I've been traveling. I went to Salt Lake City for the first time, which was really fun and very cold. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, but pretty. I liked it. it seemed it pretty. was super pretty. Yeah, it's very very pretty. I definitely want to go back. I want to go back when it's a little bit warmer and maybe like do some hiking or something like that. It seems cool. Yeah, so I enjoyed it. That's yeah. awesome. What's that up with is you? Very exciting. Um, we actually didn't do much of anything this weekend, which I think sometimes is nice. Cause like, yes. I feel like, I feel like we've had stuff every weekend and then now upcoming, we have stuff every weekend, like not like stuff stuff, but like, um, <laughs> like not like, it's not like anything crazy, but it's just like, you know, we have like a concert next weekend. And then the following weekend we have people coming to stay with us for the Lenovo basketball game. And then. The weekend after that, uh, I'm going to be in Philly for a conference. And the weekend after that, I'm going to be in Philly for a bridal shower. And, like, so, like, it's just, like, a lot of traveling every weekend from now until, like, the rest of my life. And um, (laughs) so, actually, it was nice this weekend to just be, like, we don't have anything to do. This is exciting. Those are the best. I totally agree. Like, sometimes you just need that break of doing nothing. Yes. And you can sit around and catch up on TV or do something in your hometown that's really laid back and chill. So I totally yes. agree. Yes. That's awesome. So we just lived our life. And then um, today was like super busy day. So all day I was just like, ah, ah, ah. So it was <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was I made that noise all day long. Um, But it was nice to have like a, you know, more relaxing um, weekend before I like jumped back in. So definitely Good. the recovery worked for me. Good. Good. Yeah. And we, I mean, we didn't have a busy day cause we've been on a couple calls already today and we yeah. found a photographer for the retreat. So that's yes. so exciting. I know. She's awesome. I'm so She's pumped. Awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. And then, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Oh, our uh, podcast producer is expecting her first baby. Woo, woo, so woo. I didn't want to announce that to everybody. I know, obviously, you know, Katina, but yes, um, we're very excited for a little baby worker bee in the family. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the first baby bee. It's the first baby bee. <laughs> oh, so exciting. So yay. Congrats to Allie. Um, we're very happy here at the podcast world worker being podcast world and as she's listening and editing this she'll (laughs) she'll hear that i feel that we must buy this baby a bee costume and take a picture um yes (laughs) i mean i feel like every little outfit thing i'm gonna buy for her is gonna be like a little bee something there's going to have to be yeah like 
bee stuff everywhere. So yeah, for sure. Allie, as you're editing this, just know that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. Bee stuff is coming your direction and your baby's direction. Uh, it's inevitable. There will be. Whether you like it or not. Baby bee forever. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is true. Um, <laughs> she's probably sitting there like, oh, no. <laughs> no, she loves it. She Maybe. loves it. Allie Maybe loves it. I know does. you love it, Allie. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Talking to no one, but talking to someone. It's like putting, it's like putting a message in a bottle, but for podcasts. <laughs> I'm sure she'll text us after she hears I know. this. She'll be like, I what know. are you talking about, you crazies? But <laughs> anyways. Oh, boy. Yes. Anyways. So tell me, tell me about being too involved in the meaningfulness of your work yeah i mean the work be too meaningful so this article kind of sets up a really interesting problem that we see in society which is that as we've talked about on the podcast before meaning and meaningfulness of work is having increasing importance for managers and people in the workplace so many of you probably have heard before about the importance of meaningfulness um in people's jobs and trying to increase people's meaning um And so this has become something that while a lot of workplaces are still not as focused on it as they could be, it's become more and more on people's radars. Um, But the sort of problem that the article poses is that at the same time, um, reports are showing that employees are becoming actually less engaged at work. So while more and more companies are like focusing more on meaning, there's also like not this like strong uptick societally um, in terms of uh, people's engagement overall. So they try to pose this problem of is there such a thing as too much meaningfulness or more or less what they're trying to say is is meaningfulness like a panacea for um you know trying to make jobs better for people um and so what they find is that actually your need for meaning in your job varies day to day and it's more Mm -hmm. about the job being able to match your need for meaning on any given day than just engaging in super meaningful work all the time um and they give some reasons for that but that's the basic gist okay so basically I might need meaning in my life right now like today let's say today I really want to feel connected to my job and the meaning behind my job and my job needs to give that back to me but then tomorrow if I'm you know just want to get my tasks done and have other things on my mind and I don't really care that should be okay too Mm mm-hmm yeah. As long as my job is not like forcing. I don't understand that low end. Like what would mean what would happen if like the meaningfulness shows up when I don't really care about it at that moment? Yeah. So basically what they're saying is that sometimes meaningfulness is overwhelming to people. Like if you're oh. engaged in meaningful work, um you might have not as much capacity for that meaningfulness um, every single day and you might Mm -hmm. become like overwhelmed by meaningful work. So if you could think of like a social worker, for example, um, engaging in work that they find meaningful, but sometimes they need to balance that like really meaningful, I'm striving towards something that's bigger than myself in this moment, work with like more uh, tasks that are just run of the mill to sort of relieve some of that, um, you know, what what could be really meaningful, but also might have other things associated with it. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you're kind of just looking for something like easy um, to pass the time on a given day, but you're really like having to consistently engage in this very like meaningful work, Um, What they're finding is that there may be kind of a push and pull between Mm -hmm. those two things. That makes sense. It's like if there's a lot of meaningfulness to your job all the time, then that can be exhausting. And you're um, like basically you may not be able to cope with that meaning at the time. And sometimes that might put too much pressure on you when you can't deal with the pressure at that moment. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like if your job is super meaningful and everything you're doing is really important, then there's that pressure piece of it. Yeah. That's the negative side and that could totally push somebody in the wrong direction from a stress management perspective. Yeah, exactly. And so basically what they're saying is that just like any other kind of work, there may be times when you really just want to do something a little bit more rote. Um, and if you're if you feel like you're constantly having to work on these like very um, important to you, but also very like they they need a high level of attention um, activities, then you can start to become 
overwhelmed um, by that. So they basically mm-hmm. give these like four squares. And so okay. um, they basically say like, if I have too much meaning in um, my day, then what I want I'm very, very engaged. I'm very attentive to what I'm doing. Um, so they they talk about the link to engagement as being like meaningful work grabs your attention, but it also has a higher um, ability to make you tired and fatigued. So if I have too much of it, I'm paying a lot of attention and I'm very absorbed in it, but I also will get very tired. Whereas if mm-hmm. I don't have enough, um, my job is very tiring to me because I feel like I just, you know, don't, I, I don't, um, have any purpose. I'm, I'm getting tired from the fact that like this job is just super boring to me. I have low attentiveness. And so like a deficient job is also really bad because I have nothing to pay attention to. And that's going to burn me out as well because the job is just like meaningless to me. Um, Mm -hmm. if I don't want a lot of meaning in my job and I also don't get a lot of meaning in my job, I will, not be very absorbed in it, but I'm also not going to have a lot of fatigue because I'm not experiencing that mismatch. Like it doesn't bother me that I don't mm-hmm. have a lot of meaning. Like we talked about before those people, there are a certain percentage of people that like don't care if they don't have meaning in their job. Um, and then the last box is like, if I have, I, I want a lot of meaning and I'm getting a lot of meaning, then I'm going to be both absorbed and I'm going to be less fatigued because it's matching my levels. So, mm-hmm. Uh, basically what they're saying is it's bad to have too much. It's bad to have too little, um, too much. You're very absorbed, but you're very tired. Um, too little, you're not as absorbed, but you're still kind of tired because it's just boring. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and then on the other hand, uh, you can fit whether you have low or high, but whether you're absorbed or not, you're still not going to be that tired because it's still giving you what you need. If that makes sense. Yeah, so it's kind of like the Goldilocks situation, right? Yes. Like you wanted to have not too much meaning, not too little meaning, not too soft, not too hard. Yeah. And then you find the right balance for you. So you want a job that really matches the amount of meaning you need. And that actually kind of makes sense because there are some jobs where everything you do is much more important than other jobs, right? Like if you're an ER and you're an mm-hmm. ER nurse, like there might be some slow days, of course. but Right. And there might be some non-real emergency patients, right? Like someone that has a cold but just goes to the ER for everything. Right, right. But there's a lot of what you're doing has a lot of meaning and has a lot of meaning to the person that you're seeing too. So even the person with the cold, like if they're treated well, they're pro- that probably matters a lot to them. So there is a meaning to the way you're at reacting mm-hmm. to that person. So most of what you're doing has a lot of meaning. Yeah. to it and so a very specific amount like if you need to be that person that wants that kind of job in order to succeed there because that job is so high stress and so high pace that mm-hmm. it makes sense that if you are not a good match then that's going to be terrible for you um but at the same time that means that there's some people out there that want a ton of meaning and the job needs to pick it up and meet them there yeah yeah and that's basically what they're saying um and The way that they looked at this was by um, giving people surveys for 10 days. So we've talked about studies like this before in the podcast, but these are experience sampling methodology studies. And they basically gave people surveys for 10 days and they asked them different questions in the morning and in the afternoon. And so um, in the morning, uh, they asked them how much they needed of um, meaningful work that day Um, and so they asked them like how much do you need to do important work today how much do you feel you need to have a personally meaningful um, job today and how much do you feel you need to engage in personally meaningful job activities they asked them that in the morning and then um, in the afternoon they asked them how much they received of those meaningful work activities as well as Um, how attentive they felt they were and how tired they felt they were. Um, And they also asked them how engaged they were that day. And so they followed basically the gap between what they said they needed that day and what they were getting that day with Mm -hmm. the end of day. um, How, how attentive did I feel I was? How um, fatigued did I feel I was and how engaged did I feel I was? That makes a lot of sense. So it's just looking within the person, which yes. obviously makes sense what the findings are. You want to know, like, however much you need, the job needs to match. Question. Did we say the title of the article? I feel oh my like gosh, we didn't. wait. I think we didn't. 
<laughs> okay. okay. So what is the title, author, oh. all that good stuff? Yes. Okay. So the title of this article, wow. Um, sorry, uh, Ryan Vogel, Jessica Rodell, and Tyler Sabi. We waited really long to say uh, what your article is. Um, <laughs> so uh, the title of the article is Meaningfulness Misfit, Consequences of Daily Meaningful Work Needs Supplies Incongruence for Daily Engagement. Um and it was published in the Journal of Applied Psychology in 2019. So it's pretty new. And as I mentioned before, it's by Ryan Vogel, Jessica Rodell, and Tyler Sabe. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, nice. And those, <laughs> yeah, those uh, three authors um, worked to gather this data using this uh, sort of analytical strategy that we were just talking about within person. Um, and that helps, as we talked about before, um, when we talked about experience sampling studies, it helps you to be able to map more clearly what's actually causing something because you can look for patterns by day and say like, okay, today I needed more of this and I got more of this and I felt better. Um, I was, you know, more attentive and I was, uh, less fatigued and I was more engaged. Whereas tomorrow I might need less of this and get more of it. And we can see it's the same person just under a cer different circumstance. And all of a sudden now they're, you know, still, uh, attentive, but they're super fatigued and they're less engaged. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. That's an interesting approach. And I also like the title, Meaning, Meaning, what was it? Meaningfulness <laughs> Misfit. Meaningfulness Misfit. I was like, am I missing something? <laughs> Meaningfulness Misfit. It's, it's a like, lot, it's a mouthful, but I love yeah. it anyways. <laughs> it's like that Rudolph song about the island of misfit toys. Um, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, sure. But uh, that's what came to mind for me. Uh, that's where my brain is. Uh, but... In any event, yes, the um, meaningfulness misfit um, is basically just what we're saying, that the idea is that it needs to match, uh, you know, what you need in a day. And I should also mention that um, generally between people, people who had higher levels of meaningfulness in their jobs overall had more engage had more attention, lower fatigue, fatigue and higher engagement across time than people who didn't. So generally mm -hmm. still more meaning is a good thing um, overall, mm -hmm. but on any given day, it might not be the thing that the employee really needs. So um, it's important to recognize that while, you know, it's better for you to try to create meaning than not. If you have like one blanket, you're going to use either a create meaning blanket or a don't create meaning blanket. The blanket solution would be use you know, create meaning. But if you can be more nuanced, it would be even more helpful. Mm -hmm. So then that means if you go back to our episode, your calling is calling, which is our first episode ever. Yes. Then that, that kind of ties into all of that where some people want to have a purpose and meaning in their job. And those people do really well when they have find it and they have that. And so that's still a thing. It's just yes. that now um, within my own job as an individual person, I need to balance how much meaning I'm getting each day based on what I need to get out of that day. Yes. So exactly. what tips are there? Are there any tips on like how a person can do that? A company? A yeah. Managers? So their tips are more geared towards managers, which is basically saying that, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, especially when companies are talking about like, how do you get through to millennials and things like that, which we've also talked about. Um, but a lot of the conversation is like just hit people over the head with like meaning and purpose all the time. And their uh, basic suggestion is that, you know, if somebody kind of wants to work on something that's more administrative or wants to like work on something that's a little bit more simplistic or you notice that they're like taking a day to just kind of like focus on stuff that's like less heady, less like cognitive, less caretaking, like whatever the job is, that it's OK to allow people to kind of just like, hey, I just want to kind of detach and be in my own world for the day as opposed to like, but no, like we should always be doing every single thing with the purpose and like living out the purpose all the time that like. <laughs> um, it's okay if people are generally engaged with the purpose and like you feel like they're, you know, a good contributor to the company, um, that you're not constantly trying to like beat them over the head with it if it feels like they need a break is sort of what their 
um, suggestion is, is like paying attention to individual employees needs and not just feeling like, oh my gosh, if they're disconnected from the purpose for one day, then like, I guess they're just not a good team player or they just don't care about it here. Or maybe they're going to leave or whatever, that it's actually pretty normal to want mm-hmm. some variability. That makes a lot of sense. And I think it probably goes in, I'm sure day to day it varies, but there's probably phases too within your career. Like there might be um, a few months where you're super engaged and you've got you know, all this focus on meaning. And then maybe the next month you, I don't know, got sick and were really tired or um, had something else happen in your family life that you're dealing with that you actually would prefer less meaning at that moment because you just don't want to focus quite as much in that space because you've got other stuff going on. And I feel like we've talked about this a lot with waves and cycles of people's lives and how what matters changes you know whether you're putting more emphasis on work or on life or you want to balance or whatever that shifts and changes over your life because you've got so many different things that are coming at you and different phases in your life so I think it's really important I mean this study just seems to be another indicator to remind employers and managers that people are people and they're complex and having an expectation that somebody is going to be doing something the exact same way forever is unrealistic and giving mm-hmm. people that wiggle room to breathe and handle whatever, whatever else is going on with them, or even just needing that break to do something a little bit more boring for a day. Um, you need to give people that flexibility. Otherwise you're not going to make an, an environment that's sustainable. You want people to stay for a long period of time. So if they have a, an off month, who cares? That's fine. Let them move past it. If they're there for six, seven years and they have one month, that's a little weird or a few days here and there, then that's not a big deal really when it comes to their overall performance. So just not being too harsh on people when they have these days where they might need to step back or don't really connect to the meaningfulness in the same way or don't want to connect to the meaningfulness in the same way as they have before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also uh, sort of interesting because one of the things that I think is from a from an individual perspective that might be good to pay attention to is especially when you're in a job that's highly purpose driven. I think that people can feel guilty if they have like a day where they don't care about the purpose or they don't feel very engaged with it. Like um, there was just a thread on Twitter that I responded to the other day um, with worker being where someone was like, you know, I'm an academic, but like some days I just like hate my research topic. Like I don't want to look at it. I don't want to engage with it. And I feel like I just feel really bad about that because like that's not supposed to be the way that we're supposed to feel. And I feel like maybe that makes me like not a good fit for the field because I just don't always feel super engaged with what I'm doing. And a lot of people were responding and being like, Hey, you know, just because we're in a job where like the narrative is like, this is your passion and you always have to be passionate about it. Doesn't mean that some days you're like, you know what? I just don't feel like thinking about this right now. Or like, you know, this is my passion. I like thinking about this. I enjoy this topic area, but like maybe I need a week off from thinking about it. Think about something else to get like re-energized about it. Like, um, but I think sometimes when you're in jobs that people talk about as being like super like purpose driven or like, you know, you should just be passionate about it. You're like pursuing a passion. If you have a day where you feel like you're not in tune, you can feel really guilty about that. And so I think it's good to also know that it's normal um, to feel Mm -hmm. like you're not constantly engaged with everything that you're doing uh, from that perspective. So, um, you know, that might be a good individual takeaway is to not put too much pressure on yourself. That's a really good one. It kind of reminds me of what you hear about with like kids and athletes like like children that are growing up in a sport or Mm -hmm. um activity like dance or gymnastics or whatever um they I feel like there's always a certain point where like a kid is burnt out on that activity because if they're doing it if they're doing it competitively they're doing it a lot and like it's almost like a tell, right? Like some kids will get burnt out on the activity and then never want to go back to it and they just yeah. move on with their lives. And then there's some kids that take that break and then they come back to it, right? They need mm-hmm. like, okay, this one year I might not be going quite as hard um, when it comes to my gymnastics as I will other years, but going too long and too hard, you hear all those stories of those athletes that burn out before they even get to the point of you know, competing at the highest level because they're just yeah. so over all of that work that's been going on. So I think that that's kind of similar. It's like you have this purpose, you have this drive, you have this passion, but it's okay that you might need to step back sometimes. And it's totally normal to not always 
want to be highly engaged with that passion. Like, yeah, I mean, there's so many things I can, I can just think of like a thousand examples of this that are not work related. That's the same situation. You know, sometimes you're like super into yoga and you're doing yoga every single day. And then maybe at some point you're like, I kind of need a break from my yoga and you don't do yoga for a week. It's not a big deal. Like (laughs) no one's going to say you're not a yoga person because of it. Yeah. I think that that's totally right. And so I think that's kind of what I was thinking about when I took it away. Maybe that's just because I had like just seen that Twitter thread unfolding. But like, um, you know, I think that that's that's accurate. Like if you're uh, like a nurse or a doctor or um, a social worker, like, you know, these jobs where you, you know, it's almost like, oh, my gosh, how could you say that? Like you didn't like really want to deal with patients today or something like there's like some like stigma against that right like of um admitting that that wasn't a part of the job that you wanted to do like you just want to do paperwork all day or like you just didn't feel like it or whatever um and so I think that that just the cognizance that that's normal and also that you know if you're a manager and um you know you're noticing that there's some patterns like this happening around you that you know it's not a problem or you don't have people around you who are like less committed to the mission than they could be they could still be super committed to the mission but just like you know be having an off couple of days or a week or whatever um mm-hmm. so uh so yeah I think that's the basic idea is that um you know just allowing for that and recognizing that it's not an issue but it's rather normal um and not trying to feel like as a manager if the person's like not connected to the purpose every second that it's a that it's necessarily an indicator that they're not on board more broadly yeah and I think as a manager it's really important to take a moment and reflect you know is this just like a something that's happening right now like let them be you know if you see it's a long-term thing where people are not engaging then I think it's worth a conversation like there might be something else going on and all you need is the clarification that oh yeah like they're just they've been really struggling with sleep or whatever they have a newborn baby and right. they just don't have the capacity to care about everything um you know so thinking about your employees and your team much more broadly and checking in like it's totally fair to check in and have a conversation if you've built that open relationship with them where you can actually talk to them about these things um but obviously that's a goal right everything we've talked about in every episode and on our website and everywhere we go is about building those really positive work environments so if you have that relationship with your employees you can always check in and see if it's been a while that you feel like they haven't been connected yeah then have the conversation but don't freak out when it happens you know here and there every once in a while and again and don't freak out before you have the conversation because it might be totally normal in whatever phase they're in right now and just let them work through that phase or support them how they need the support. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are really, really good points too. Um, yeah. So this is, uh, you know, a pretty, um, straightforward article, but I think Mm -hmm. that it's always good whenever there's something that, you know, comes up in, uh, society as a trend or, um, you know, companies start pushing on it. It's always good to say, okay, but what's the limit to this? Like, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that are really good in the workplace, but sometimes they can, you know, be taken to a point where it stops being beneficial for the employee. And so I think, you know, previously in a lot of workplaces, nobody was really talking about meaning or purpose. It was just like a job's a job and who cares. And so it was really important for researchers to kind of hit people over the head with the idea that like, yeah, you need to, you need to harp on purpose and meaning. And I think a lot of organizations still struggle with just that basic idea. Right. So, um, Mm -hmm. this, you know, is not something that's like an open and closed case for all employers that they're already doing this at a baseline level. But, you know, I think that as with anything else, as companies start moving into this space, um, like we've had conversations about before, like, okay, it's great to have, you know, work-life balance, but, you know, at what point are you emphasizing the fact that people need to be in balance so much that they start getting stressed about whether or not they're balanced? You know what I mean? Like there's like (laughs) a limit to some of these things uh, in terms of they can be helpful, but um, they don't necessarily need to be like 100% the focus all the time in order for you to see the benefit. Mm -hmm. yeah I think that makes a lot of sense this is really interesting thank you for sharing this article I liked it a lot actually yeah absolutely um and thanks to uh Ryan Vogel and friends whose names I forgot to say at the beginning but uh, (laughs) they're the founders the founders of the feast so uh (laughs) I think they'll understand and we will link to it as always so that always helps too (laughs) yes yes absolutely um awesome well thanks for 
listening to it. And uh, for everyone out there, uh, make sure that you have some meaning. But if you don't feel like having a purpose that day, let yourself be purposeless. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a funny tip. <laughs> Just be purposeless. You're cool. Just, it's uh, all if, good. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to float by every now and again, that's cool. Fill out some paperwork. <laughs> no one cares. It's fine. Yeah, it's all good. Cool. It's all good. <laughs> Well, we'd love to hear from all of you listeners. Um, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know your thoughts. Have you experienced struggles with meaningfulness? Uh, let us know. You can email us at contact at workerbeing.com. You can find us on our website, workerbeing.com. Um, you can also reach out on social media, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at workerbeing. Um, a little plug, we have an active Facebook group that's been really fun lately called Worker Being Hive. So if you're interested in that, we'll link to it as well. Um, and as always, sign up for our email list if you want to hear more about our events and other things going on with Worker Being, such as our retreat coming up in April. Thanks for listening. The Worker Being Podcast is hosted by us, Patricia Grabar and Katina Sawyer and produced by Allie Johnson. Oh,